Good morning. Today we have two readings, Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14, page 581 in your pew Bible, and Matthew 11, 16, verses 16 through 19, and 25 through 30, pages 11 and 12. The Lord is kind and shows mercy. He does not become angry quickly, but is full of love. The Lord is good to everyone. He is merciful to all he has made. Lord, everything you have made will praise you. Those who belong to you will bless you. They will tell about the glory of your kingdom and will speak about your power. Then everyone will know the mighty things you do and the glory and majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom will go on and on and you will rule forever. The Lord will keep all his promises. He is loyal to all he has made. The Lord helps those who have been defeated and takes care of those who are in trouble. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed, you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at the glutton and the drunkard, a friend of the tax collectors and the sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. And all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Son, anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, come to me, all of you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, it's almost vacation time, um, for me at least, and I know for some of the rest of you too. And so um, I decided this morning I was going to start the sermon with one of my favorite vacation stories. Some of you have heard it before, but if you're very kind this morning, you'll pretend that it's brand new to you. And um, I, I hate to, I don't usually reuse sermons, but I do use stories sometimes over again because this particular one uh, is very meaningful to me and I love it very much. In 1990, uh, we decided to take our children on a, on a cross-country trip. We bought a new minivan and we drove 10,000 miles in five weeks all the way to San Francisco and down the coast to San Diego and, and back. And as you can imagine, with four children, ages 13 to seven, we had a wonderful time. <laughs> When we were going to do the trip, I asked many people in the church I was serving then about their advice about taking such a trip and what to do, and we decided to go anyway. <laughs> so we loaded up the car and we went. And um, my children, as I've told you before, saw this trip as a, uh, an American tour of uh, amusement parks across the country rather than as something we saw Mount Rushmore and Yellowstone and uh, lots of really wonderful sights. One of the best sights I saw, however, did happen at an amusement park. And uh, it was a very hot day, and those of you who have been to places like Six Flags or Disney World, when you go on a really hot, humid day and you're walking on that blacktop, you swear that you're going to just faint, die, and uh, they'll have to drag you out of there. They have these misting stations, you know, where you'd walk through the 
through the water that they're spraying on you and uh, very much refreshed by that. Well, anyway, we decided that we were going to go and see this particular show because uh, Dad wanted to sit down for at least 45 minutes to a half an hour at least, and um, the kids didn't really want to see the show, but the show was a high dive, and there was a big pool. You know, of course, they don't look very big when you see the platform way up in the air. And the person was, some crazy person was going to climb this skinny ladder all the way up to the platform and jump in this pool, which looked to me like it was about 18 inches deep. Of course, it was deeper than that. Uh, and uh, divers have all their methods for doing this, but that wasn't really what struck me that day. We were at the very top of this amphitheater, and we came in on a level area, and then the seats, the metal aluminum seats, you know, on a hot day. Why? they do these things, I don't know. I suppose there's no other alternative, but at any rate. So we were sitting way at the top of this amphitheater looking down at the pool and there's the, everything's beautiful. Where do my kids want to sit? Down in the front. They want to see this person go in the pool. And I said, oh no, no, you know why you can't go down there? Because you see down there, you know, Creativity is really important to parents. You gotta make up these reasons uh, really quickly. The reason we can't go down there is because, see, it's down in a valley and it's much hotter down there. Because up here, see, the breezes move around and there's not as many people sitting giving off body heat and down there it will be terrible. <laughs> You're gonna use this excuse later, I can tell. Uh, at any rate, nobody was sitting in the very front seats of this by this pool because they get wet. Guy's going to jump in the pool from way up there in the air. Uh, water's going to have to come out of that pool. Now another family comes in, sits on the other side, and they came in the same entryway we did, which was right off the sidewalk level, and they sat down. And the father reached into this wheelchair and picked up his son, who looked like he was about seven years old, and set him down on the bench. <laughs> 